Let's take a look at the angles and bearings questions. So the diagrams below show how far a line has moved from a fixed point. Match up the diagrams to the number of degrees the line has turned. So this one here is a quarter turn, so that is a 90 degree angle. So that matches up with that. This is um, 180 degrees, and this is three quarters of the way around, which is 270 degrees. So here we've got a right angle, obtuse, reflex and acute. Now an acute angle is an angle which is less than 90 degrees. So this angle here is less than 90 degrees because this is what 90 degrees looks like. A right angle is 90 degrees and a right angle is always shown with this little square symbol there. So that is the right angle there. An angle which is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees is an obtuse angle. And an angle which is greater than 180 degrees is a reflex angle. Okay, so here we need to uh, measure the angles using a protractor. Now, obviously, this is quite hard to demonstrate online. However, what I would say is that this angle here is clearly somewhere between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. And if you get your protractor, protractor right, you should measure that as 50 degrees. This angle here is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And again, if you put your protractor on this point here, you should work out that this is 140 degrees. And again, this angle here is less than 90 degrees. It's quite close to 90 degrees. So um, we've got a rough ballpark there. Um, but if you measure this accurately with the protractor, it is 80 degrees. The bearing of B from A means we are measuring this angle here. It's less than 90 degrees. So if we get our protractor out and measure this angle, that is 80 degrees. The bearing is gonna be 0, 8, 0 degrees. Here we want the bearing of B from A again, so it's this angle here. So this would be 90 degrees, so this angle is greater than 90 degrees. And if we stick our protractor here and take a measurement, we'll realize this is um, a bearing, well, the angle is 110 degrees, so the bearing is 110 degrees. Here we want the bearing of A from B. So if we're at B, what is the bearing of A? So we need to measure this angle here. Um, so how do we do that? Um, well what we could do is what, using a protractor we could measure this angle here and then subtract that from the 360. Um, another way we could do it is actually just to measure this angle and add 180 or uh, 180 degrees to it. Um, but this angle here we know that if it, if it was straight down that would be 180 and if it was three quarters of the way around it'd be 270. So this angle has to be somewhere between 180 and 270 degrees. As I say, probably the easiest thing to do would be just to extend this line somehow using a ruler, measure this angle here and add 180 degrees to it. But um, in total, it's 240 degrees because this angle here um, is 60 degrees. This angle here is also um, 60 degrees, so you could just add 180 to that one um, and that's another way to work out that bearing. Question number seven, we want the bearing of A from B, so we want this bearing here. Remember, the bearing is always measured from north, so it's uh, north going clockwise round, so it was this massive angle, not this angle in the middle. However, the full turn is 360, so what we could do is work out, measure this angle here, and then subtract it from 360. Now, just to as an estimate, well, we know that this line here is south, which is two, uh, sorry, 180 degrees. This line here is west, which is 270 degrees. So this angle is greater than 270. If I measure this angle here, this angle here is 80 degrees. So if I subtract the 360 degrees from my 80 degrees, I'm gonna get the bearing, which is 280 degrees. Alternatively, uh, this is 180, and then just measure this angle here. Uh, if this is 180, then this would be an angle of 100 degrees. So a couple options there.